Sir. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman has three and a half minutes remaining. The gentleman, my friend, Mr. McEwen, raised a very interesting issue about who is really involved in this war in this country. In my opinion, it is those in uniform and their families. All one has to do is to go to Walter Reed, Bethesda, hospitals, go to a visitation or a funeral, and those are the ones. And the saying goodbye to the National Guard, the reserve units, the active duty units, the farewells and the welcome homes, those and their families are those that are involved. And I'm afraid the gentleman is correct that they are the only ones that are actually involved with this war. You bet I'll yield. Respect for him, and I, I know of his strong dedication to the troops and to the people serving. I had in my office yesterday a, a constituent, a young man that played football for my brother at home. I, I introduced him to the chairman. He has spent the last three years at Walter Reed. He says he's like one of those uh, dinosaurs that has a big mouth and two hands that he can't use. And, and, he, and he does struggle, and he has a bad leg, and he was a master sergeant. And uh, he protected his troops, but he took rounds from mortar. But in talking to him, he said, this debate is very distracting and hard for the morale of the troops. I pray that they will understand that all of us have different feelings, but we do understand their devotion and, and their commitment to duty, and they understand our commitment. We just see things differently. And at the end of the day, I hope what we end up doing is what will be best for our troops and for our country and for the world. Thank you. I, I, I take back my time, and I thank the gentleman. Uh, it reiterates uh, what I've been saying, that it seems like the members in uniform and their families are the ones truly involved in this war. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to C-130, 